You're my favorite type of sticks and sticks. Don't worry. At least I don't think there is a cheese named sticks, so you're the favorite type of sticks. <sighs> you're the only sticks here I know. Maybe. Maybe not. You don't know me. Maybe I know like 20 million Stixies. Loads of Stixies are looking for a daddy as well. Your jokes are pretty cheesy. You, you make jokes? <laughs> yeah, I, su I suppose I can't. I suppose that counts, because that's probably the only reason I go and hang out with you, because your jokes remind me of cheese. <laughs> no other redeeming qualities than cheese. I just realized sticks and I've forgotten literally every voice I did last stream. So it's gonna be interesting. It's not gonna be easy. And we start with Amanda again, our favorite girl. Just make new voices. Ah, yes, of course. And then when well, you watch it back later on, it just changes every every single time. It's a spoil. Spice! How are you doing, Space? I know the girl voice, yeah. I know the girl voice, because it was just like this! Like, that's very easy, because uh, that's the only girl voice I can do to begin with. So I'm really talented voice actor, as you can tell. I'm good. I'm good as well. Good to hear, Space. I've just been chilling, you know, woke up way too late at exactly the afternoon, as any well-functioning adult does. And then I had lunch, watched some Formula 1, played some games, and now I'm here! So it's been very productive today. <laughs> How are you doing, Space? Did I have for lunch? What do you think I had for lunch next? Bread and cheese? No! Ha! Get screwed, Sticks. I actually had bread and Havoslav. And then an egg cake I cook, which doesn't really translate very well into English. But... Decent surviving waiting for the second wave of COVID to hit. Yeah, I think everyone is kind of anticipating it, waiting for it. Not not the Americans, because they never left the first wave, so that they don't give a shit. But I just hope like the vacation we've planned with some friends can go on and doesn't get cancelled because of the second wave. How is your uh, new home space? Have you been completely adopt adopted adapted? I know English. She adapted to your new surroundings yet, and has Carney been doing all right? Oh, by the way, you're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, sorry to hate, break the new to you like this space. Your parents contacted me and said, "Hey, our daughter is going to uh, visit your stream." Can you please tell her that she's adopted? So, space. I'm sorry. Your actual dad is uh, Sticks. And she's here to take care of you. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. <laughs> I'm so not ready for this. <laughs> Hi, Pops! How was the show? My thanks, I'm cool! You don't say! 
Oh, you're only just starting now, yes, because there was no one here and I'm not gonna talk in a few more voice to myself for 20 minutes. Well, there's no one here, especially since so many people are emotionally invested in my journey to find a daddy, you know. <laughs> Man, the pen. Matt thinks I'm cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sloppy loves me. That's good. Yeah. Blind leading the blind, huh? Well, I just got dunked by my own child. Unbelievable. I'm so proud of Amanda. I mean, she's a fucking idiot, but she also just owns me hard, which is good. Alright, I'm hitting the hay pops. I'll see you in the pit. What? In the pit? Night, kiddo. What? In the pit? Date complete! <sighs> Rank B, I've got dad points. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and, and that's what I thought, Sticks. But why would my own daughter tell me I see you in bed? Isn't that a bit strange? To say goodnight. See you in bed. To tuck her in, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It's best here. Cell phone holes the goofy band pens. I'm cool and I made a scene. I didn't do much baking at the concert, but you know, I don't know who does. All right, that points. Achievement progress. Ah. Oh. Now I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles. I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if you got any coupons today. By the way, does my character like not have any work? Uh, <laughs> the nice male person. Oh, is that a new daddy? Slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get in. The story of my life. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at a large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Oh, it's such an egocentric little twat. Amanda! Amanda! She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. The Can I pass you right now? Can you come back later? <sighs> okay, just thought you'd want this big ol' envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes the door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? Oh, Horn Institute for the Arts? That's not a voice I did for her, but whatever. What is this room, Amanda? What is this? I like it. It's artsy. Bit of a mess, though. Go clean your room. I mean, if you're busy, I can come yeah. back. For the police! I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. Nice. Yeah, it's probably bad for her teeth. Doesn't matter at all. She doesn't seem to hear me. It spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And... The suspense is killing me. This is a dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. Congrats, Amanda. <gasps> I got in! Amanda, we're looking for daddies. This is nice that you got in. But... Tosses the letter of Santa gives me a big hug. That's good. Because these are important. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in! Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> it's not my fault. That's how my daughter sounds. Are you judging my daughter's space? She has the voice of an angel, alright? <laughs> right, Dad! I know this 
this one's really expensive. It's so far away. <laughs> Judging hard. <laughs> I think for a moment, HAI was one of the more expen more expensive schools that a man applied to. But I know she's had a hard sell on it for the longest of times. Well, maybe it's time that I find a job again, or I find a sugar daddy. It'll be tough, but I'm gonna make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Ah. Instead. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want. Whatever you want. Hmm. Wherever? Matt and I walk along the bayside, tearing into a foil, foil wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Amanda, you have shit taste. If you get the chance to go anywhere, you don't go to a burrito fucking truck. What's wrong with you? Could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining determining factor. My ability to speak English is really what makes me truly stand out as a voice actor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple girl. Just give me a read or a view. You can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. Yay! See, I'm replicating a voice flawlessly. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID in. Amanda, slow down. I'm gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? I mean, I'll get professional photo editing software for free. That's good. Because otherwise, professional photo editing software is going to cost you a thousand bucks. It's nice to see you this enthusiastic, Amanda. But I wish you wouldn't do it between bites of a burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's going to be. You take a survey online and I met you with someone with similar major interests. Oh, with a similar major in interests. And they're going to be best friends. Craig and I wear, a good roommate can be a lifelong friend. That's not actually how to do it, right, in America. They just plop you into someone with... They, they, they don't give you a choice, do you? Do they? I thought they just plopped you in, they're just like, oh, you're gonna go into this room with this man. Have fun. I mean, maybe similar study makes sense, but... But don't even get me started on the bad room, Oh no! I don't know, you've heard of people taking a survey and never done it yourself. Alright, I didn't know. Because it's, it's not like we don't have dorms in the Netherlands, so. You just rent a student house somewhere in the city, and that's where you live. A studio or something. I'm just kidding, we didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig bore at home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded like a dog. Call ruled. Yeah. Oh, Dad, they let you have animals in the dorms if you got a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit, maybe a snake. Maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit though? Yes, Amanda, a snake would eat a rabbit. I think I'll leave that all up to you though. She's so excited, don't want to disappoint her. That's just mini bags with her uh, hedgehog. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? Uh. No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock out it. I need you to knock it out of the park with these last few months of school. School, okay? If we really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. Scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. 
She looks a bit sick, doesn't she? Like, like she's been crying or something? I promise I'll try harder! Pat her on the back. No, pat her on the head. Head pets. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Aww. Yeah, it's immediately well up in here. With you. Aww. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You've all grown up now and you're such a good person and I hope you know how important you are to me. Look at me. So, so teary-eyed. So proud. Dad, stop! You're gonna make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make the taste all sick. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Aww, aww, wholesome moments on stream. Welcome. You've got dads. And now it's time for another date. Hey, are you up to anything tonight? You go and Damien. Wait. Brian? Yeah, I know, right? The Brian. Oh la la. I've already been on a date with Matt. Crack is a childhood buddy who has sticks as a kid. Brian is... The ultimate daddy, but he also has a daughter that has like 20 million PhDs already. Robert is straight up a criminal, I don't know why he's in the game, but nice to have him here. Damien is in the wrong game, he's a vampire, but also happy to have him. Hugo is uh, my daughter's teacher, which kind of doesn't make things good. And Joseph is a Christian homosexual in denial. And his wife is a hoe, that's true. Absolutely true. But let's see. Are you up to anything tonight? I feel like, uh, uh, Hugo and I were planning to go to the art walk downtown and we're wondering if you would care to accompany, accompany us. I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. See, I'm telling you, this man comes straight from like the 1910s or something. Like, uh, not even like uh, 1600. What the hell? <sighs> Why can't I see Damien and Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? But I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are gonna bust down my door any minute now. Gotta destroy this computer. Oh my god, I'm cringe. And has to cringe. Mike, this is a quick chat. Oh, thank god. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? You can run direct to boot and nuke up a start up flash drive. But once you've done that, it's best to destroy it to destroy it. Jesus, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. Of course. I know you are. The Victorians are well versed in information security. Aha. Uh Aha, -huh. uh -huh, Damien. Likely story. Mike, you need to go see some art or not? Art is good, let's go see art. Art, art, art. See, it's even an art stream space. Like, daddy's art. I'd say this is a perfect stream. See that art, see that art, see that art. Damien and Hugo, Hugo, Hugo. Invited me to go for the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. Monthly art walk, Jesus. I've never been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm here a bit early. I don't see Damien and Hugo around anywhere, and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing along all these fancy art people. Fancy, shimanchy art people. Mm. It's so fancy. Mike? Turn around. It's Joseph. Oh, it's Joseph. Joseph, what are you doing here? 
Oh. What am I doing here? Why could you ask me that? I'm obviously a huge art. Uh, oh. Appreciate. Appreciator. Appreciatist. You're a snob. Oh. Uh, okay, fine. Damien invited me to the... What's this voice? I don't know what my voice was for him. Must have been posh, but... For this art thing, I'm guessing he invited you too. Yep. Admittedly a little out of my debt here. Oh, thank God. I thought I wasn't gonna be the odd one out. You're not, Joseph. Don't worry. Are you allowed to say that? Say what? You know, thank God. <gasps> it's been bested. Oh. Yeah, but you can get double points when I say it in, since I'm a minister. Oh yeah, of course. Of course, Joseph, you pretentious fuck. Ooh. And these points get you into heaven. That's how it works. We work on a point-based system now. Anyways, where are the guys? And look around us, but you go, Damien. Seems you've just arrived at the gallery. Good eve, good eve, good eve. Oh wait, that was Damien. Sorry, yeah. Damien. Evening, friend. Mm -hmm. Who is ready for some art? Um, you know I am. I have no idea what I'm in for. Art is death, and nothing is real. Ah oh, yes. That will make a goddamn good impression, won't it? To just tell them art is death. Fuck all of you guys. Art, art is dead. Yeah, I should go with art is dead sticks. Is that really... Never go on a date sticks, please. <laughs> art is dead. Hmm. You'll fit right in. Mm. Oh yeah, of course, because all art people are... Depressed and cynical. I forgot about that. God damn it. I made myself the perfect art person. All you have to know is that you, if you're ever feel, feeling overwhelmed, there's generally already, always a table that has free wine and cheese. <gasps> free wine and cheese. Yes. Yes, I'll just be standing there all day, mate. Free cheese. I like art now, exactly. Oh. Oh, I've got the table in my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go help myself to some tiny wines. Mm hmm. Tiny wines. Do you want to hang out with Hugo and Damien or with Joseph? I mean, I know this says get cheese, but it's really an option between who do we want to hang out with. Because this guy has a wife that tried to seduce me already. But this one is my daughter's teacher, and uh, he's just... He's lost, man. I'm telling you, he's in the wrong game. Okay, you go and Damien. There we go. So, what's this first place? Hmm. This particular artist specializes in landscape painting of various locales within the American Northeast. Oh, of course. Of course. Hmm, exquisite. I look at the art. It's red art. At the risk of sounding uninformed. Do all of these landscapes look like butts to you guys? Hmm. Damien and Hugo lean in, examining the paintings in earnest. It would appear as if, as if you're correct. Hmm. Valid assessment, Mike. Connoisseur of the arts. <laughs> this art sits pretty easy. Ah. Oh, it got more complicated. It doesn't. I've studied art. It doesn't get more complicated. Hmm? Sometimes the butts are more symbolic, sometimes the butts are metaphors, sometimes art is about the butts they don't draw. Now that is true. Hmm, interesting. Joseph returns to our group with a tiny cheese and wine. 
Joseph, that's not enough cheese, mate. If it's tiny, it's not good enough. What a miss. Oh. But. <laughs> shame. The cheese is nice. Wait, why are you saying shame? You're supposed to be happily married. So are you saying, Min, that you studied but? Kinda, I suppose. Yes. Maybe. There were a lot of bats, especially in the classical period. So many bats and peens. Yeah, I might have. Might as well have studied bats. The cheese is nice though. Shall we visit the next place? We leave the first gallery and walk a few minutes before we reach another one. This gallery is a bit more crowded. Huge paintings of, I'm not even sure, hang on the walls. Mm. Ooh, oh jeez. What am I looking at here? Oh. This is abstract, oh, this is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? I stare at the painting. Concentrating at hard, as hard as I can on its meaning. That's not how you look at abstract art, but okay. Alright, is it a metaphor for the human condition? Does it remind you of your childhood? Does it represent strife? Or it's a but. It's a but. Sticks is the real art connoisseur here, so. It's a but. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a bet. I... Hmm? Hmm... Well, the fairly assessment. I feel like the artist was trying to make a different statement. Probably how much you like butts. <laughs> yeah, I'm a servant of the Lord. But the Lord likes a good piece of butt. I mean, depends who your lord is. If your lord is Zeus, holy crap, he likes a good bet. Oh. We're all good creatures. God's creatures. Even bad. Oh my, Joseph. Huh? <laughs> Comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the sense of isolation he feels creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's rapidly moving towards digitalization. Could be, I would have to see that piece. Wow, I need to figure that. Mm -hmm. Uh that's what it says on the placard. Uh mm -hmm. yeah. let's look at a few more of these. We walk around the gallery, but Joseph fucks off to another corner. Sampling to some more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting that the artist chooses to not let their work be defined by, what's the word? Realism? Realism. I mean, abstract art is underrated. So. If you look at one of the paintings, patron scoffs loudly. Oh, so. <laughs> I could do that. Hmm? Excuse me. Oh my! Here though. Not here. Hmm. No, come back here. The patron walks away. Not noticing Hugo fuming right next to him. Oh. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You don't seem to have the intellectual depth of the artist or the artistic skill to execute a piece even a fraction as impressive as this one. Alright, you know. Hmm. Calm down. Don't re in the middle of the gallery. Art is a true expression of the self, and it seems like yourself is bad, so your art would be bad. Hugo saying Soul Game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back at this point. Hmm. Friend, friend. He's not worth it. Ah. Uh, Hugo manages to cool down. He smooths his jacket. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. I just love art very much. I think we found the ideal daddy for space. 
We know, buddy. We know. I pat Hugo on the shoulder. <laughs> you know, it is the mood. Is it cheese? Oh, it is che cheese. Cheese is any mood. No. Hmm. It's wine and cheese. Oh. Ah. Co signed. The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which thankfully is grounded in realism and is actually wine and cheese. Hmm. We've got one last stop on our tour. You lot feel up for it? Is it gonna be any weirder than this art? Oh. It's absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. Damien, Hugo, and Joseph and I walk over to a performance in the street. Oh, no, it's performance art. Several masked performers, performers in leotards undulate. Undulate? Wildly on the ground. Wait. Several masked performers in leotards undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and us. So undulate is a verb. Okay, I thought it was leotard undulate. That was one piece of clothing. Undulate. Undulate. Imagine the worm dance. So spazzing with them, going up and down, and that's what it means. I'll undulate all over you. Oh. Undulated. Cool. Cool, okay, thank you guys. What's the leotard? Because I'm also not into fashion. <laughs> it's a difficult word, okay. Dream Daddy is too far beyond me. Leotard is what gymnasts wear the female ones. Alright. Alright, fair enough. You know those were leotards. Sure. So basically, it's a bunch of wieners. <laughs> so, uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Hmm. What's happening? You mean not just the female ones? Yeah, I'm pretty sure gymnasts basically wear, all wear the same stuff. I don't know, I have to be honest and say that I don't really watch any gymnastics, like, ever. Male ones wear long pants and vests. Oh. Mm -hmm. I second this question. Mm. Performance art, yes, but what does it mean? Ah. Again, I pose the very same question to you, Mr. Oxlong. Fear of existence? The very humanity of being human? They really like screaming, or... That's... Hmm... Hmm, what is human screaming well? What was the word again? Indulating? On the ground. The humanity! The very humanity of being human? Yes, are we gonna go in deep? What's that? Humanity. Yes, we're gonna go with humanity then. Welcome, Baudemain, by the way. What's this? Rape sticks. Is that gymnastics or is that? I suppose that's gymnastics, yeah. Alright, the very humanity of being human. Well, what do you think they're trying to say? I believe it's less about what they're trying, what they're saying, and more about why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. With almost every form of art, Music, painting, photography, the artist uses the medium as a conduit for their emotions. 
the performance art, the medium is the artist. It's the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis. Alright then, Damien, calm down. Hmm. The beautiful Damien. I get the feeling that Hugo and Damien are already dating. And I don't know why they're in this game. So, what you're saying is, if you start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art as long as I, like, really mean it. Hugo is foin AF. He, he mighty foin. Look at him. Look at him space. I told you that was your ideal daddy. Damien fixes him with a hard stare. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I is gonna start making fart noises, but based on the look of your face, the joke isn't gonna play well with this crowd. Oh. Mm. Mm. Wise. Ah. We watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can, and clap politely after the dancers scream their way off stage. <sighs> Think I'm all arted out. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. Ah. In the Polonaise, I hope. The conga line. We make our way back to the cul de sac. Tiny wine and tiny cheese sloshing around in my stomach. Sounds like the good life, not gonna lie. I think what I've learned tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative. But what I've learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and tiny cheese together, it eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. However, there is no such thing as too much cheese. Oh. The tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. See, cheese provides safety and comfort in people. <laughs> Gonna go get ready. All right, space. Thank you, and we'll do my best to find the ideal daddy. Wax wings too close to the sun. I know. Right? Oh. Cheese wings. They would melt in the sun too, and I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. Hmm. Plus, it would be delicious. A nice Emmentaler, possibly. <laughs> hey, if you guys were painters, well, what would you paint? Huh. I actually dabble in oils. Oh, don't say I dabble in oils. Just say you make paintings. You. I actually dabble in oils. I mostly paint landscapes. I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the time. Paint cheese. That's a good one, Sticks. Hmm? I think I would focus on personal portraits or of people in unique professions. Like, for example, Lucidos, Lochados. Another word I don't know, why are they throwing big words at me? Or rather words that are like never used. The flying F is a luchador. Luchador? Is it a luchador or a luchador? Sticks, help me. What is this unique profession that probably doesn't matter at all and shouldn't exist in the first place. You have no idea what it is. Shit. Bowderman, you know everything. Tell me. You know everything. Not enough to win a pub quiz, but you know everything else. Get wrecked. Get fucked about. Mexican wrestler. It's a wrestler. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm just happy we won, Bow. 
You can't read the team. I bet you did. Who were you in the team with again? Like Sera Moira, Bart or something. Sera Moira Flores. Flores Rosamina Moira. Yeah, Flores and Rosamina are not there enough to know. Actually, none of those are enough in the Dings group to know inside stuff that well. The people who went the least to Dings, yeah. And we, we just had, like, we had one person less, but we had all the three people who went the most, so. Can't go. Oh. <laughs> oh. I think I'd paint dicks up, boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses, mostly boats. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised you're, you're choosing boats in favor of a long history or religious imagery of imagery and artwork. Oh. What? Boats are cool. Oh. What about you, Mike? Food artistry, landscapes, or tasteful nudes of the artist? Tasteful nudes, okay. Six ones nudes, which is no surprise. <laughs> uh. Alright, takes one nudes oh. of the artist. Art is a money making business. I know what sells. You finally get to the cool design. Oh. Alright, boys. Good art. Good art. <laughs> Agreed. Ah. See you guys around. Whether you want to or not. We're all neighbors after all. I hadn't decided to deal with my inevitable cheese over. Can't have a cheese over. If you do have a cheese over, eat more Welcome. cheese. It solves You've the got cheese dads. over. I've got dads. So I'm saying. So I'm saying. Listen. Realistically, we have three options. Because Robert is a fucking criminal, right? We're not gonna date a criminal. He's gonna stab us in our back and sell our liver for cocaine. Not gonna do that. Hugo and Damien are like super cute together. They're dating. Can't date those two. Joseph is very religious and has a wife. So we can't date go for him at all at the moment. So we only have Brian, with his daughter's mother than us. We have Matt. But Matt is a bit of a pretentious fuck. I have Crack, but Crack has a baby that's named Styx, or River, whatever. It reminds me of Styx at least, so can't have that either. But these three, I would say, are the only realistic options we have. Because Robert will kill us, these two are already perfect together. And Joseph is married and religious, which is both in the way of my... Mm. Green haired, a pink beard, personality. His wife is gonna cheat him in anyways. Yes, but he also named his kids like Christian, Chris, and Christiana or something. Or Chris, Chris, Chrisia. Like he, he's a religious nut job sticks. And we already had a date with Matt. Let's say we either go with Brian or with Craig. But if you guys say, no, I want you to get stabbed in the back by Robert or something, or I want you to attempt to kill a vampire, Damien, then we can do that as well. But I want to be on Craig's list, you know, so. Craig. Does Wolbedine have an opinion? Whether it will be Craig or Brian or anyone else? So otherwise it's gonna be Craig. <gasps> oh yeah, we already read all of that. Wait, we, we have zero hearts with him. Do we have a heart with him? <gasps> we do have a heart with him. I see, I see. 
crack ham. Let's message Craig. Is Matt the concert guy? Yeah, we went to the concert with Matt. Crack is the name of your ex, so you automatically have a negative opinion of him. Well, he's not carrying you around as a baby. So. Sorry, Sticks. Oh wait, Matt with 1T. Yes, automatically no, actually. <laughs> nice. We're really forming our opinions of these people very solidly. <laughs> I wonder what cracks up to today. I navigate the cracks. That book page and type out a message. Hey, bruh. Should I say neighbor? Let's catch up like old times. A couple of moments back. Pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Damien might be a vampire, but he, ha he has long hair. That's a plus. Is it? I don't know. Bruh, my man. Let's definitely hang out soon. Might be a little different from our old week weekend long banders, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Yo, man, a panda! I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor. Surrounding by, surrounded by magazines and new newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece. Or she's going full conspiracy nut. Like, connect all the things that are connected behind the scenes on us. Might just be art there, who knows. What you working on? Just a collage for class. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. Is she wearing a tinfoil hat? That's a good question. What if this bow is secretly made out of tinfoil? Forming conspiracy theories. Yeah, I bet I bet she's the crux of it all. She starts every conspiracy theory in the world. I take a closer look at the collage. Mm. That's a lot of dogs. Conspiracy theorist theory about dogs coming in. Dogs aren't real, they are only devices made by the government to spy on us in our most vulnerable moments. Be right back. Alright, see you in a bit, sticks. It's mostly dogs. Yeah. Did you uh, need something? Uh, Craig invited us to a softball game. Oh, wanna go? Ah. Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and then you bought me all the gear? And then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball towards me and I just ran off the field crying? And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up. Yes. Aww. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic, sentient softball. Uh Man, that might be slightly fucking stupid, not gonna lie. So, does that mean you don't want to go? Man, that looks up, looks me dead in the eye, determined. Ugh. I'm finally ready to face my first head song. Let's do this. Let's do it, man. Man and I make a short drive out to the local softball field. For a kid's softball game, it's pretty packed. We clamper up the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I don't see crack anywhere. Kid's softball game from crack. That means crack pulled out his baby, splopping it on the field, giving like the bat to the baby, and then someone is going to yeet a ball towards that thing. That's what I Aww. think is gonna happen. So, when do the kids start crying and running over the field? 
you, you know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. Hmm. For nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. And man, not what's wrong with you. Everybody takes joy in seeing children fight for their amusement. <laughs> Definitely not that. Mm -hmm. There it sticks. Oh, cute. The game starts with the kids running onto the field, as you crack by the dugout with a clipboard. He has a river strapped to his chest as per usual. There's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's the mascot. Pancake mascot. Oh yeah. You name the kids brightly colored jerseys. I see that it's the Maple Bay Flapjacks against the Pinewood Ocelots. Go Flapjacks? Oh. Uh. What the fuck? Why did he just go, oh, and then the chest comes up, choke up on the bat? What is he doing? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, right, okay. Choke up on the bat, Miranda. Yeah, Miranda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard, despite the name. Mm -hmm. But yelling is fun. Yeah. Give it a shot. It's cathartic. Cathartic. There we go. I can speak English. Keep your eye on the ball. What's important is that you're having fun. What are you willing to sacrifice to win? I mean, what should we yell about? Like a rebel yell. Sacrifice. I'm back. What are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. Leave it all out on the field, Miranda. If this is you want. If you want this, you're gonna have to bleed for it. Bleed, Miranda. Bleed. Well, I assume to be Miranda's father gives me a dirty look. Hey. Crack is the one who went, oh, hold on to my bat, or something like that. So I'm not the problem here. I should shoot it back at him. That attitude isn't gonna bring the man up to D1. Mm. Dad, please don't fend with any other dads while we're out here. Welcome back, Sticks. Oh yeah, you said choke on the bat. Like, that is a euphemism if I've ever seen one. He's saying that to like a kid. That's not good. You watch a couple of innings of softball. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet. But Crack trained his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Crack and Crack is good with children. What? It's amazing and hard that they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off the field crying yet. Man, uh, dear, you have to let it go. No, what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up at bat. They hit a fly ball out of the center field. The tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses a glove and hits a straight in the forehead. Hot shot. What? See? It's a completely justifiable fear. The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. Crack makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off, off the field as she sobs. Man, it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once backflipped off of a roof into a pool while shotgunning a beer. You show responsible now. What do you mean? That sounds super responsible as well. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit, and we watch a couple more innings. Crack's team is crashing the other team in the ninth inning. The Ocelot seem to have given up by this point. I see one outfielder eating fistfuls of grass. A true sign of intelligence. 
A batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and... Oh no, it's coming right for me! Oh no, 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 oh no! I close my eyes and brace for the impact. I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. Ah, I... I caught the ball! You saved me! I caught the ball, Dad! I caught the ball! You did it, Amanda! I faced my fears, I defeated the softball! I can do anything! Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. I'm proud of you, kiddo. No sticks, it's you. Aww. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the lines girl, as the girl lined up to shake hands. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig. Great work, man. Uh, thanks. We've been working hard all season and it's great to see it paying off. So proud of all my girls. Speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? What? Oh my, hello. You two seem like twins. Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. Hmm. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which one of you is the evil one? Hazel! Yeah, it's me. Huh. Good looking out. It's weird how all females in this world sound the same, isn't oh. it? Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? Like, I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of the boss tests. I usually throw rocks and stuff when people get mad, I tell them I'm brown. What? Huh? Hmm. We'll uh, talk about this later. Huh? Mark, bruh. Just got a couple more things to clean up so we can hang, bruh. Yeah, bruh, let's hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jumps into the conversation. Please don't be a Karen. Lots of fresh have to celebrate a win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team to get pizza. And then when it's cool, oh, man. Oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense, the girls won. What sort of celebration could we have without a furnace needed? This is not Mob Simulator. What are they doing here? Hey, get out of here! Boo! Guys, real girls, true. She lays her hand on his shoulder and gives him the goo goo eyes. Even even sticks is not amused. Look at that shit. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. She's thick, boy. Man and I share a look. Hmm. Right, right. It's cool if my bro comes along. Mem looks slightly put out, but covers it up with a smile. Of course! <sighs> Where are we going? Thirsty pizza? What? Ah. What? It's a real place. Swear to God. Nobody likes the goo goo eyes. Is goo goo eyes just like baby eyes? Or dog like puppy eyes? Or is it a different type of special haze. And then the stream of girls clad in softball gear pile up out of a minivan and into a local pizza buffet, which is actually called Thirsty's Pizza. Amanda and I trail behind them with crack. Puppy ass kind of thing here. A pizza buffet. Sounds like an interesting combination. Reminds me of all the awful pizza we put in our bodies back in the day. Oh. I remember how we used to fold whole pies in half and then put taco fillings inside. Or whole pies in half. Taco fillings inside of pizza? 
Ah, oh, pizza goes. I could never forget. How did we survive college? Hmm. Uh, bruh, our bodies were younger back then, more elastic. Or able to handle toxic waste we put inside us. Luckily, I live like a saint. Never do anything bad. Keep my body young and healthy. Don't do drugs, don't smoke, do a lot of alcohol, don't do alcohol. Never eat pizzas. That's the type of thing, you know. Be healthy. The good old days. Can I eat a little pizza of a 350? <laughs> Was that the price you got it for at New Year's? Wasn't it? Oh no, because we had to pay for the second one fully, didn't we? Oh no, we cancelled the second one. I thought we had at New Year's at Moira, we had like pizza for like 10 cents. Oh yeah, Athens, that's right. In Athens, we also had a shit ton of pizza. Oh, so cheap. So cheap. But Moira, New Year's at Moira was like 10 cents or something, or was it free? That was good as well. Kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. And then and I jump in on a couple of slices of mediocre pizza. Oh. Bruh, give me a pizza bath. Huh? No, absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. And if you go to a pizza place, at least eat goddamn pizza. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Dad! Living mom walks up to us, talking to Craig as if he weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking out us our kids. My daughter says me every day how great you are. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm happy to look after them, bruh. Definitely helps that I have kids of my own, bruh. Thanks so much, I'm staying on left. I'm glad to know that my children have a strong meal living in life. Well, is Greg like insurgent dad for like 20 families or something? Amanda and I look at each other again. Craig gets it from all angles, eh? Ooh. Craig smells sheepishly. Huh. Uh, thank you so much, dude. Craig holds his fist up for a fist bump from what the mom, for, from the mom, in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw my bone here. Would you give it to him from all angles, man? I would. I'll give it to Craig from all angles. I like how, like, Baby Sticks is just not amused as soon as any mom starts talking to Greg. She's like, piss off. Don't want you. Give me my pizza. And then it's they're all good. Create a diversion. Tag team with Amanda. Or smoke cream Martha. The smoke screen, the liberal smoke screen. I don't know. Screen Marta. Alright. Alright, we're coming back to my wing when this. I gotta run the blocking play. So, uh, Marta. We must get a lonely without Daniel. Oh, yeah, just straight. Hey, Marta, you're single, aren't you? Or a widow, who knows. You know, I also happen to be an uh, eligible single father. And waggle my eyebrows in it. Hmm. Bye! Alright. I remember that working better in the past. She turns her back to me to talk to Crack. So, Jack and Hazel and Bright going to sleep over? Huh? Yeah, they're pretty excited about it. They'll keep you out of trouble, right? Keep them out of trouble, right? 
Of course, but I could always use that. That's enough for everyone to know it. If you're not doing anything. Uh, this lady's really going for the gold. <laughs> it will actually be nice to have a night to myself on River. But thanks for the invite. Look. Look how an amused Styx is by this Karen that is trying to get to Craig. Oh! Styx. Styx, I. You think you're blowing a snot bubble, Styx? Come on. Uh, Martha, you might want to grab the child. She's stuffing pizza into a coin slot. Martha angrily turns her attention towards her daughter. That's a dummy. Is it a dummy? I don't know if it is. It looks more like a bubble than a dummy. Or oh, pacifier. Looks much more like you're blowing a bubble. I'm saying you're blowing a bubble. Just do not the other cake machine. I swear to God, if you have to buy it. Martha storms off towards the kid. Okay, fine. You blew a spit bubble. That's right. That's right, Sticks. He seems nice. Oh. Yeah, the team's one big. Weird family. Sticks all sorts, right? Tiffany, don't eat it so good. Hmm. Tiffany's a stellar hitter. I finally think you have time to talk to Crack now. Oh, man, you're a busy guy, eh? See, sticks now it's out of your mouth again. It doesn't make sense to just be there to specify, like, in and out, in and out, in and out. So I think you were blowing, blowing a spit bubble. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, on days like today, Brown, I hope. Dad! Hmm. Hey, girls, wait. They're also his kids, or are they just pretending to be his kids? Dad! They help us beat our record on DVR! Wait, the DDR? What are you talking about? DDR? We told him that I had a team and you could help destroy him on a team smith. Please help. Hi. Girls, <laughs> you know I don't have my jukes anymore. Crack looks at me like a hurt puppy. Aww. Oh. So it's duty calls. Promise we'll catch up in a bit. It's all good, buddy. Crack runs off with his daughter, and I'm left alone with mine. Can we talk about the fact that they come from the DDR? Oh. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today. But it seems like he was getting dragged in every direction. It definitely wasn't like this in college. I feel like we might be a third wheel mm -hmm. here. That's worse places than an arcade to be left on your own devices. You're right. Wanna drop some coin for pinball? <gasps> you know it! Man and I pull up to a machine that's feeling pretty hot and get to work. I'm a little risky, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. Pull out a decent score and then challenge a man at the top mine. And immediately she gets multi ball. Looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good. Aww. Don't patronize me. Shut up, kid. I'm saying you're pretty good. Hey, it's trying to pay a compliment. Nana shushes me. She's in a zen zone. She fights valiantly, racking the points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just being able to watch. Sounds with Craig, right? Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Are you fucking kidding me, Janet? Yeah, we went to college together. Uh, please don't let her lean on my thing. Oh, this is so interesting. Do you know if it likes available? No, oh, I honestly don't know if I could say. Mm. Seriously, you're gonna make a tilt? Because it's just so much, so much work to watch off his kids. Don't you think it would be great mm. if he's. 
lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, a buzz of sounds and the game is over. Janet makes the pinball machine tilt. Hey. You stone harpy? Manda. What? Aww. I said. I have to go over there now and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that will hurt your feelings. Janet is such a Janet. I know, right? For fuck's sake, Janet. Stop trying to think about getting filled up. I have some respect for your fellow humans. Not everything is about you getting wet, Janet. Manda. Bro. Bro. What's going on? Bro, now's a chance. If you don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda and say some quick goodbyes with crack. We head out of the pizza place. Finally. Look how happy Sticks is to get out of there. Amanda promises that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. Oh. It's, it's bedtime, Sticks. You need to go to bed. You should not be out here in the night. I hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bruh. Not at all, dude. It's good to finally get you off on myself for a second. Five more minutes. Alright, five more minutes. Sticks! Uh. You don't burp. What's wrong with you, Sticks? We're having a moment here, and then you just come in and burp. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, almost to myself. <laughs> All that, bruh. Crack walks over to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. Oh, I thought he was gonna put the baby in the trunk of the car. Oh. <laughs> and for some catch. This is my delight. Catch and more. You throwing the ball and me running after it. But sure. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. Five minutes into our date and we're already tossing balls. Mm -hmm. This is going great. I have a cooler in my car that we could grab. But there's only juice boxes in there. Bro, man, found a hood is strange. Nice. Telling me. Can't believe I'm looking back on my checks and crack days and reminiscing about it. Those were some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal cack stand. Hmm. It was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. I haven't probably hung out with crack in so long. I don't even know where to begin. Coaching football. Talk about the business. Hmm. Talk about the kids. That's enough for now. How would you already say that's enough for now? That's so rude. Hi, so rude. Ask about coaching softball. Then. <clears throat> Crack likes that. So, is software coach the life you wanted, or was it the life that was thrust upon you? Oh, well, thrust upon you, crack. Hmm. <laughs> I'll admit it, I was hesitant at first. Briar and Hazel had so much energy that we just had to get them into sports. But no one was there to run the team. The more did it, the more I saw how much it meant to all the girls. I worried there would be a riot if I quit. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal bats. Even without the metal bats, children are pretty terrifying. Oh. Mm, they're quick and work as a team. You've trained them too well. They take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. Hmm. Exactly. Business of the kids. Getting some great, great quotes for Discord, by the way. Yeah, I still need to make the Discord so that everyone can just put quotes into one uh, one thing here and we don't have like three servers going where quotes are put. Business. So you're in a business now? 
Yep. Yeah. We sell fitness gear, imports and exports mostly, but we're coming up with our own line of at leisure sure, wear soon. At leisure wear soon. At, le at leisure. Why does it feel like I'm not saying it correctly? I think I am, but I'm not. I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, but you know, sweating. Sounds like you'd make a killing. Hmm. At leisure, yeah. If you ever needed leather gear, I've got your back. You could sponsor me. I'll wrap your at leisure. At leisure? At leisure? At le leisure, okay. At leisure wear brand. While I mow my lawn. Oh. Mm -mm. That's a glamour lifestyle we're catering to, yes. So let's talk about the kids. The American race leisure. Oh, okay. I can't believe you're a father of three. No, oh. can I. You know me. I'm an indecisive person. You switched your major four times. Oh. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life with raising kids when Briar and Hazel were born. It all finally made sense. It was like all oh, the time I spent trying to figure out things to lead to them. Trying to figure things out and get to them. Sorry, I can't read. Reading is difficult. Couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. It was the best thing to have ever happened to me. I it could be the only thing that I ever that I, Jesus Christ. It could be the only thing that ever happened to me and I would still be proud of the life I've lived. Hmm. Me reading skills very good. It's nice out here. Quiet. Must be good to get away from the softball moms for a bit, huh? I don't know. Christ. Janet. Yeah, that was a, a lot. Are they always like that? Nice. Actually, this was nearly as bad. Yikes. Uh... I'm just. So not interested. Well, what are you interested in? I don't know. He doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Peace of quiet. Hey. Amen, brothers. Amen. That hot, hot silence. Hey! My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on a Saturday. Relatable. Also what I did today, so... Crack, I'm living your fantasy for you, mate. Oh. But more seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. I don't know. Uh, I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger into my girls' lives. They've already been through so much, I can't put them through that. Buddy, I hear oh. you. So, the moms can hit all of me they want. Can hit on me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. Uh, I'm doing a great job, right person will come along or hit softballs, don't get hit down by mums. Wait, why are all the meals off the crack? What's wrong? With softballs, yes, I like that. Hit softballs, dirt gun hit by moms. A wise man once said that. I'm quoting myself. Copyright. Uh, thanks, dude. Well, I'm distracted, I missed the softball and. Ew! Ew! Hits me right on the head! That hurts! Man, that was right all along. God damn it. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, dude. Crack runs over to me. Hmm. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. What is he gonna kiss? Crack spends a moment examining my oh. head. It's worse than I thought. 
why we got my head is empty. So clumsy, man. I know, I just got nervous. Look, look at how unimpressed his baby is with me. Even his baby thinks I'm a goddamn moron. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Hey. <laughs> you would be so lucky. That was planned. I mean, oh, kissing is for the weak. Real men just fuck. Wait, is that what it's? I don't know. Which one shall we do, Sticks? So far you've been the master of my dating life, so let's go. Kissing is for the weak. And I'm super strong. I do a couple of, couple of push-ups to prove how strong I am. The regular ones, not the modified ones. Those are for quitters and people with good knees. A strong dad who's capable of raising children despite past mishaps with projectile objects. Hmm. Uh, easy there, tiger. Typing with one hand, eating an ice cream. Uh huh. That's also why I type with one hand sometimes, sticks. I got up and dust myself off. River yawns. Aww, little sticks, he's tired. Hey, little buddy, you must be getting tired, eh? Aww, sticks is sleep. He's sleep. Oh. I hate to say it, but. I should probably head out. So he thinks I'm so. Uh, you get older and life just kinda gets in the way, huh? We start walking back to the parking lot. Sticks is awake again. Hey, remember that one house party you went to that got broken up by a helicopter? Classic wow. house parties. Bruh! How could I forget? You and me hopped over a concrete wall to get away. But the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. Could you imagine the look of our on our faces? We just walked straight past them and we like we were out for a stroll. Uh, not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us of how about how big of a bust it was. We had to talk with them for thirty minutes. You told them you were interested in joining the academy. Bro. And they started giving me pointers for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man. College. Hmm. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars. Craig pulls me into a hug. Or at least... As much as we manage with a baby between us. Yeah, I don't want to suffocate sticks. That would be sad. Nice. Never enough time, huh? Guess not. Oh. Oh, let me make it up to you. Let's hang soon, yeah? Alright, crack. I'd like that. I yawn as I walk through the door, spotting a man I hunched over her collage glue stick in hand. Don't sniff that shit. Don't do it, Amanda. Don't do it. Burning the Midnight Art Oil. Yeah. Fair that might do something productive between episodes of Shark Hunter lip sync battles. Dude, Shark Hunter sounds like the most epic program they have. Do the shark lip sync? Or do the sharks lip sync? Or do the shark hunters lip sync? Ah. Yes. I look over her shoulder at the collage. Amanda, this is some good art. Look at this good art you've made. Thanks. Just about done. Like before, still a lot of dogs. In one corner is a giant pile of cash. In the other it's... Amanda, is that me? Mm. Yep. The whole thing is about my goals for the future. And those are basically just have to sit in a giant pile of money. With my 20 dogs. And also have a strong and mutually supportive relationship with my father into adulthood. Aww. Uh, 
Oh, uh, now you've done it. Get ready to watch a dad cry. Here it comes. It's happening. Aww. Oh, dad. You did this with your good art. She pats me on the back. Hmm. Hey, how was your hang with Greg? I wipe a tear from my eye. It was good. That crack guy sure is busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. The softball life isn't for quitters. Also, I'm very proud of you for facing your fears today. How does it feel? I'm on top of the world. Pops, I should start facing my fears more often. Depends on what you're afraid of. If you're afraid of, like, serial killers, probably just keep that. Oh, yeah? Now about you hit up some empty parking lots and practice, there is a parallel parking. Da, da, da. Easy. Parallel parking is easy. Just use hmm. your mirrors. Baby steps, Dad. I'll work my way up to it. Alright, I'm gonna hit the hay. Take care of late night television for me, alright? I'll let them know you said hey. <laughs> it's actually scary. <laughs> For you, it must have been a long time since you've actually driven, though, bro. I don't like you saying parking is easy. I mean, it's still... it. Parking is the most annoying part of driving, I'll freely admit that, but... Parallel parking, I personally, for me, parallel parking was always the easiest form of parking, and I hate it, like... Doing a normal parking into a busy, like if you have a busy car park and you have like a road that's one car wide and then you have to dive in between two other cars. I fucking hate that a lot more. Parallel parking is just adjust your mirror a little bit and then with, by looking at your mirrors you can just go in between two cars. That's not, not that much trouble. It's easier with practice. Yeah. Your poor parent's car. <laughs> the, when have you last driven? Because in Berlin, you, you don't drive. So it has to be like once in the, what, two, three months you're in the Netherlands. And then you also have to drive. Have an excuse to drive somewhere. Can't be long. You know how easy parking is for me, Bo. I can park within like two millimeters of a concrete wall in a parking garage in the southern town in Germany. It's easy. The last time you were there. Yeah, okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> Five months. Rip. Rip a -roon. Rip a Rooney. Sticks can't drive. And that's not because she doesn't have a uh, driver license, but it's because she's a woman. That's, that's why the car was unlucky. Lol. We got a rank A! Oh my god, there's so many dad points. Wait, what's the difference? Oh, we have dad points? This is, I assume, our relationship with Amanda. And we have daddy points, which I assume is our relationship with crack over here, amongst others. I'm gonna get cancelled. Oh yeah, you can't make any form of joke anymore in 2020, I've got. How dare you say that women can drive just as well as men? Wee! Jokes do not exist. Wee! It's a joke. It's a goddamn joke. You agree with me? I hate women drivers. Alright. I don't know, surely there has to be some kind of biological thing that men or women are better at driving. If men are the hunters, they should have better like depth perception and awareness. So they should be better at driving, right? Like it shouldn't be It isn't a defining factor in whether or not you're a good driver, but it should be slightly Easier for men, I would assume. Real talk. I would assume so. But who knows. You hate women drivers. You know, I I hate vans the most. 
because people in vans always drive like anti-social dick bags. They always speed. They always, they realize they're stronger than a car. So they just like flop in between two cars and just like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? You can't look through most vans. They have like solid doors in the back. So you cannot see what happens in front of them. But because they're constantly speeding, they constantly have to push the brakes because they get too close to the car in front of them. They're just chaotic fucking drivers. It's like, calm down, you stupid fan. Women just get distracted and they can't judge the size of the car. Yeah. I, I don't know if women get distracted easier. I think people as a whole get distracted pretty easy. Can't judge the size of the car. My brother can't either, but other than that, I don't know. They don't look ahead. That could be a thing, yeah. Most men I know are looking really far ahead. What I think is another thing. I think women are more often or easier scared in cars. Whereas men are much more like, oh yeah, whatever, let's just, let's just go through with it. Confidence is always important. Not overconfidence, but just confidence. A stereotype probably just exists because men have historically driven cars longer than women. Could be, yeah. It could be. I think there is. Uh, but, but I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if it is kind of true. But it's the same as saying like. Asians can't drive as good, which isn't a stereotype because they can't drive as good, but because in Asia they just don't have rules on the road. They just don't give a shit. I mean, don't get me wrong, all the cab rides in Vietnam were lovely, but... <laughs> That's not good driving. <laughs> You've been riding a motorbike for years, it makes you much more observant. I mean, you have to be, because otherwise you're dead. I don't know. I mean, it might be that women are not as expecting of like motorbikes and such. Honking in traffic. Yeah, just honk in traffic. Do you remember that one taxi that, I don't know if you were in that one, I think you were, uh, that literally uh, went the opposite way on like a three lane or two lane highway that was empty for a little bit because it was a shortcut. And then he crossed to the other side when he had the option. That was <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> the guy just turned on the highway the wrong way because it was empty and was just like, ah, you can cross here a lot quicker, a lot easier. <laughs> that was special. <laughs> They don't forward plan, they sit way too close to the steering wheel. I suppose so. I mean, I see a lot of men. I mean, men may be... Maybe it's not the lack of forward planning, it's the lack of patience in men, maybe. But I also see people or men not plan forward. Like, if you drive, like, 30 kilometers past the speed limit on the left side to overtake everyone, and then go three lanes to the right to take, like, the exit. You're not planning in my eyes. You're just a dig back and it's endangering people for no good reason. And I think it's more so men that cross along, like, three lines of traffic than women. It's more so women that, like, hit a, hit a pole when they are, act, like, backing out of a parking lot. It was nice. Yeah, nobody minded. Like, the taxi driver was super casual about it, and we were just like, all right, well, that just happened. I mean, the road was empty. Had there even been one car that has had come towards us, uh, I would have shat my pants. <laughs> Women just sit in the middle lane. <laughs> <to speak. laughs> Driving speed limit in another is so annoying now, because on the highway it's now 100 kilometers an hour, which is just... Not enough. 
Not enough. They need to make at least 100 that 10 feels more natural than 100 just it's so slow. And there's nobody to overtake. I suppose so, yeah. I suppose women do that more often than men. Because if men stay in the wrong lane, it's the leftmost or for you, the rightmost, at like 50 kilometers too fast. Rather than staying in the middle lane. Anyways, we got apparently a very high score for bowling. Low score for automotive. We are a bruh. Low, low score for sports. Very high score for cats. And thirsty. Oh. Mm. I don't know. Not that I'm saying that I'm an Welcome. amazing driver or anything. But dads. At least I drive according to the rules and I go back in the right lane when there's room. And I, when Bardewan's in the car, I won't bark as close to anything anymore. Because he freaks out. You do like a thirsty daddy. I love me a thirsty daddy. Hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have a nice, I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. What's he gonna send like show bobs and vagine clubs? Ah oh, man, great to hear from you, buddy. Ah, oh, fab. I'm still stogen. Storm. Storm. I'm still stogen. Strong. I am strong. <laughs> And don't I know it? Say, I've been reading up about whey protein. You use that at all? I figured it would develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. My children are having a tea party and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. Oh, I mean, she's right there, mate. She does have an account. Your, also invited. Your? Your? Fucking your crack, you illiterate fuck. What the fuck? Physical invitation to fuck. Oh, dump him. I know, right? What the fuck, crack? I can look past a lot of spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes, crack, but your compared to your? No, no. Cool, I'd love to come and let Amanda know. Thanks, Amanda's dad. Send that party. Crack. <laughs> yeah, crack. What the fuck, man? Send stand up for yourself. Don't let anyone disrespect you. Agreed. Oh, yeah, why are you pronouncing it crack? It's crazy. Is it crazy? Or crazy? You just try to misspell it. Crage. It's not crage. Crab. <laughs> it's crab. Not like that. No, well, that's what you're writing. Crage. Craig. Just, do you just mean Craig? It's not Craig. That's not the name. Craig is not a name. Coffee time. You know, dads love coffee. Gonna brew myself some something black as midnight on a moonless night. I put on a fresh pot and work a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. OMG sticks, OMG, what's wrong? Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad, ready for today? Ready for every day, sweetie. Gonna tackle it head on. Huh? No. Are you ready for the thing that we're gonna do today? The things that you promised you'd do? Honey, I already told you that I'm not going to throw away my Tom Clancy novels. But 
just stuck in the living room. I keep bumping into them and they're knocking over and you don't even read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. I see Porky Dot. No, I don't remember that. Crack <sighs> skates. A hand drawn invitation. Ugh. Nana walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper, inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to the tea party. Stream lagging for you or just me? Uh, it's giving me, on my end, it's saying stable uh, KBS. It's fully in the green at the moment. So it's it's not me at least. But they spelled cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. I can go outside the sweatpants. Nothing's stopping me. Huh. Dad, just I'll see you in a minute. Are we gonna put on outside pants or fuck authority? Are we gonna be us? Or are we gonna be outsidey people? Outside. Gross. Because I would say be who you are, but then at the same time there's social pressure. And people are looking at you when you're outside. So much. Be awesome. Fuck it, Dorothy. Hmm. Well, what did I say about the pants? I'm a rebel, sweetie. I'm a rebel. Huh. Whatever. I'll share it. We'll find. You get to have dinner, a lunch, or whatever tea party with Teddy, Penguin, and a bunny. Dude. Hype. Oh. I mean, they look a bit old for that kind of shit, but... Hype. Hype, hype, hype. Hello, thank you for coming to a tea party! Well, 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 I'm watching men play Dead Simulator once more. Exactly, Tito. Welcome back, my man. We were invited to a tea party by the two clearly not daddies. I do my best to bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a courtesy. Wait, that doesn't say courtesy. With a curtsy. Curtsy? Curtsy. I hope they're not daddies disguised as daughters. No, no, they're not. This one might be in the future, but this one definitely isn't. It's a female bow. Oh, like the. Where they do their little dress pickup and then. No bow, yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, I said bow, no bow, I know. But... Alright. From what you've seen in this game before, you do worry. Don't worry about it. Sticks is in this game, by the way, Tito. She didn't know. Brian and Hazel lead us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals. Matt and his daughter, Carmen Sita. I hate too. Hello, Matt. You have a daughter. We haven't met yet, but hello, Carmencita. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. Well, I'll show you some of the quotes from his stream so far today, Tito. Let's see if you're still worried. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Oh. The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. It is the hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmen Tita. Hello, Mr. Man of Bed. Did you just wake up? Uh, no, why? And those are inside pants. Alright, Carmen Tita, you don't hide it at all. <laughs> okay. Oh. Please have a seat. I sit down between the man and Matt. Hmm. One tea. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out of this chair. 
Hi everyone! I'm going to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to her. It's the girl with 20,000 billion PhDs, god damn it. Oh, sorry we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. Amanda pinches me on the shoulder. God. See? Oh. So you approve of cargo shorts when they're on Brian, but not when they're on me? Huh. Dude, you're embarrassing me at the tea party. This is a high class affair. But. Huh. Shh. It's about to start. I don't have enough female voices to do like these 20 daughters, dude. What the fuck? Thank you all for taking the time for your busy schedule to come for some high tea. Makes it all both of you just designated tiaras. Mm, tiaras? Oh my god, we're gonna make fabulous. And a little tiara sitting on, on everyone's plate, well, except for Brian's. This is a softball helmet. Oh, uh, we ran out of tiaras. Uh. I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. That irrelevancy police act like it. Oh, oh Brian tries to balance the ill fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but immediately tumbles off in, into the bushes. They made you more worried than before, Tito. Come on. Those are all perfectly normal things to say. You know it, Tita. You know it's perfectly normal. Okay. I'll get that later. Hi, everybody! <gasps> Rustics! Ooh! Crack comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. You lost your sticks. This pouch is gone. Dance, tea ready? Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, been steeping for a while now. Awesome! Mm. Which your girls like to serve your guests tea? No, oh, thank you. We would much appreciate our servants' help. Craig needs over to me. Mm. <laughs> That's me. Craig places tea caps in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie in onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm. Awfully for the arrested for tea. I clink my tea cup with mats and take a sip. It's pure cyanide, I bet. Good lemonade. It's tea! Hey. Right. Very good tea. And lean over to Amanda, who is happily enjoying her tea. So, what do we do at tea parties? Mm. We enjoy the splendors of the upper class society, father. You're uncomfortable with how these daddies are close to each other. Dude, you have no idea how close I am to some of these daddies. Mm -hmm. She takes a dainty bite of a sandwich cookie. What is a sandwich cookie, by the way? Because I don't think that's a thing here. Is it like a double layered cookie with something in between? Is that just a sandwich cookie? Explain to me. Sandwich cookie doesn't sound like anything. 
I think so, although we don't call it that here. Yeah. I've never heard of it, at least. Marvelous! Moira, hey. Moira, Moira, Moira. How are you doing, Moira? How slight. So the meeting of the princesses has been called to order. Oh, okay, these are our princesses now. Here, here. I'm a warrior prince. Oh my god, I have to do one, two, three, four, five different female voices. I can barely pull off one. <laughs> um, but I'm a prince, warrior princess. I have, <laughs> I have stuff. And I have like a really cool sword. Good, that's good to hear. Are you there tomorrow, Moya? I thought you said you could, right? <laughs> what the fuck is that voice? It sounds like a myth of moose. No, that sticks. That is someone's daughter you're talking about. What the fuck? Have a bit of respect. You can't just say that she sounds like a myth of moose. Moose. Just give one a dad's voice. Yeah, I will uh, give Kamatsita the dad's voice. Can I be space princess? Not allowed. And I'll be. Oh, we look so princess. Just do a gift accent or something. Sticks, it hurts my voice just to talk like this. It doesn't sound like I'm capable of speaking in a different accent. God fucking bloody damn it, mate. I'm also a space princess. Yes. Kind of a moon I want. Plus, these are twins. These two can actually uh, have the same voice, that's fine. Min, stop hanging out with so many underage girls. If only you knew, Tito. If only you knew how fitting this is into the jokes you make mm. in our group. Space is pretty big, don't you think? Oh, I changed my mind. You wanna be a space princess too? Mm. Dad, what are you? I'm seriously already tired of your shit, Amanda. Do I get to be a princess? With that hair, that beard? Absolutely. Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... Are we History Channel princess? Hacker princess or Rude Boy princess? History Channel. History Channel. Rude Boy. Oh boy. Oh no, Tito or Moira are gonna have to decide. Oh no. Moira, don't ignore me. Are you gonna be there tomorrow? Will you have dinner with us, Moira? Rude boy princess sounds more fit. Okay, then it's gonna be rude boy. Sorry, Bow. If I drop my crown on the floor, I'll make sure to pick it up. To pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. This is probably a reference to Ben or something that I don't know. Sad times to be had. Oh, yes, yes, Moira's there. More Moira. Yes, that's what I need in my life, Moira. Just a little bit more Moira. Nice. I'll think I'll be landscaper and general contracting princess. That's a good name for a princess. Uh -oh. Barista princess reporting for duty. Bro. Bruh. Crossfit princess here. Oh no, what did Moira do? Four emo what? It should have it should allow four emotes now. What the f I'm sorry Moira, I don't know why you did that. It should allow more than that, but for some reason it didn't. I'll have to have a look if it reset. <laughs> Not my servant. Oh. 
Oh, don't be sad. Because sad is dust backward and dust is not good, yeah. <laughs> Got face monitors. Yeah, there were too many face monitors. <laughs> or emotes, as most people call them. <laughs> but I like face monitors. Actually, I like that a lot more. If it weren't for the Princess Uprising, you'd be serving me. We sip tea for a little longer and then the real girls run off to fight dinosaurs as space rock star warrior princesses, I think. They grew up so fast, it was like yesterday I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Mm -hmm. Did she make you a servant too, bruh? <laughs> you betcha. Caramacita! Actually made me brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Mm. Pitfall, dude. Your custard blends are amazing, bruh. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was choice. Dude, mood. Hey. Aw, oh, thanks, bruh. Hey. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm glad we moved into this community. We're here too. Man, has been kind of a role model to them, you know? I hadn't even realized. I don't even know if I'm not this either, but I guess they're right. All of the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. And when I do that, the police has to get involved. <sighs> so rude. That, that's like the double standards in our society, right? I'm, I'm so proud of her. You better not proud dad cry at this party, Mike. I brought extra word jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time while the girls play. Oh, is it a mini game? Uh, it's not. I wanted a mini game. The day rolls on and the girls all get tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them the best one later. We all clean up and help put away the tea sets and tables. Then head out as Daisy and Canafita! Fall asleep on the dad's shoulders. Oh. Oh. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, rude boy, Francis. Mm. Oh, a little bit later, bitch. You want dinner? Yeah. No, I fell up in cookies. Me too. I'm tired. Mm. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. It is. Huh? A lot of little small kids are in disaster as well. But in a good way? But also in kind of a scary way? Oh, uh, so? Uh, I feel like I gotta be in my best behavior for them. I don't wanna let them down. Is this because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? What? Uh, I corrupt her dad. She second-hand smokes now. <sighs> What's an F-bomb? It's saying fuck. Or maybe faggot, depends on the country, but I don't think that is seen as the F-bomb. F-bomb is usually fuck. Cancelled again. I I was explaining things. This was for an educational purpose. Shut up. Education should care about facts and not feelings, though. But they did mention smoking in the gaming in the game, so we might be cancelled anyways. Well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role model. Mm -hmm. Shucks, Pops! I riffle a man that's here. Oh, if life gives you lemon sparse, the onion and eggs, make an omelette. You got dads. I'm gonna get a message. Not. I can't talk with a man. Right, 
Let's see. Dead book. Yes, this is dead book, my man. It's a much better version of Facebook. I know you secretly want to be on dad book as well, Tito. So we already have crack, we already have Matt, so we just do Brian. This is the only realistic last option left, I think. Because once again, Robert will just kill us. Damien will suck our blood. Hugo is already married to Damien and Joseph is Christian and married as well. Right, we're going with Brian. Brian Harding. Mm. Okay. Is that guy a vampire? Yes, totally. He might claim he isn't, but I pretty certain he is. Man, I don't know how I feel about hanging out with Brian more. But it seems like Daisy and Amanda got along really well. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and hang out with Brian more for the sake of the kids. Crack my knuckles and start typing. That sounds like he does it like that. I can't, I can't crack my knuckles like that. I can do it like that. Hey Brian! Great grabbing burgers with you at the cookout yesterday. We should get the kids together and hang out soon. I wait a couple minutes until I ding! Comes in from my computer and a message pops up to the screen. It's Brian! Let's see what he has to say. Hey okay, man, always love a good burg with a buddy. You should definitely hang out. What do you think about mini golf? Oh, mini golf. You could bring the girls out and have a ourselves a little friendly competition. Rock on, Brian. Why is everything a competition, this guy? He signed his name, that's cute. No, that's cringe AF when people do that. Friendly competition? This is perfect. I know Brian. I know Amanda and I will crush Brian in mini golf. I've been taking her to mini golf courses since she was a little kid, and I'm proud to say she's almost better at it than I am. Almost. I type back. That sounds great, man. Name the time and place, and we'll be there. Hey, Amanda. Hmm. Hey, would you give us some mini golf with Brian and Daisy? <laughs> I'm a little out of practice, and I know my back's going to leave something to be desired. But I think I could keep it in the negatives. Negatives? It's mini golf. You don't keep averages, do you? You just tell your total score. Do they have averages for mini golf? Oh, they do actually, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. It's been a while since I made you golf. Perfect. Come on, kiddo. Let's do this. Whoa, it's a pirate ship, bro. You ready for this? Oh, matey. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Why are you talking like that? Hmm. Because this mini golf team, mini golf course is pirate teamed. I just now realize that we are indeed standing on top of a giant pirate ship in the middle of a put-put course. Put, put the rest of the tanks. Come on, pirate dad! Want to talk like a pirate me or I am scurvy? Yeah, I don't see pirates, only angels. Angles? Only angles. There's no time for jokes. Anything? No, no, I'm just gonna go with the vest. Yeah. I'll make Brian and Daisy walk the plank on a superior goal since they built me that scotch. I mean, uh, the balloon. Hmm. Come on, Dad. You 
you told me there was gonna be some friendly competition. Friendly competition is that code for actual competition. I need to prepare my body, mind, and soul to defend to defeat Brian on the field of glorious battle. Sorry, men didn't see what the fuck sticks. Hmm. What the fuck? Unacceptable. It's just mini golf. Just mini golf? <laughs> it's so much more than that. I need down and place a hand on Amanda's shoulder. I just want you to know that there's no pressure. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it too much. We have to be Brian at mini golf. Whatever happened to just, you know, having fun? Uh, we will have fun. When we beat them. Hmm. Amanda gives me a side eye. Before I can side eye your back, I spot Brian and Daisy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ahoy there, mateys. Ahoy. That's, that's gonna be Daisy's voice right now. You're welcome. Brian walks up with Daisy in tow. Looks like they've already rented us some golf clips for our mini golf excursion. Total power move, dude. Why didn't I think of that? Hey. Alright, first mate. I heard there's brought some treasures in these waters. You gonna help me plunder it? Oh, uh, man, I don't think this is a real pirate ship. Right, so this is just play put put on. Ugh. And then it gives Daisy a look. Mm -hmm. I mean... Aye aye, Captain. I can hear you. Aye aye, Captain. Oh, he lives in the pineapple under the sea. It's my it's my it's my best. Daisy winks at the man. Ah, look at those two. A two peas in a pod. So, you excited to get some mini golden? Oh, you know it. You, uh, gambling man? Oh, Brian, what are you? Alright. I know when to hold them. Oh, poker reference. It depends on what's on the table, or do I get you if I win? Oh, that's quite direct. Right, Sticks, now you have to look at the screen. And tell me which one it is. Forcing you six. You can't escape this choice. Can't escape it. She's escaping it. Shit. She's expertly escaping it by not replying. Fuck it. See. Do I get you if I win? Oh, Moya is going for the direct approach. <laughs> Amanda puts her hand over Daisy's ear. Gross! Oh. Brian blushes. He's clearly a little uncomfortable. Mm. Oh, we got into his mind! Good job, Moira. Now it will be much easier to defeat him. How about a loser buys drinks tonight? Mm -hmm. Alright. How about we make it a bit more interesting? Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Luz has to mow the winner's lawn this weekend. Uh. Well, my yard's pretty big. Are you prepared to take that on? You need space for all that belly. <sighs> I think you should be a little more concerned with how you're gonna maneuver around my hedges. It's highly technical work, not for the faint of heart. Mm. I don't think I'll need to worry about that. I'm very good at mini golf, you know. Oh yeah? Hole in one, every time. What I just said is not a true thing, but it already came out of my mouth, so I have to stand by it. I'm looking forward to see that happen. Brian and I eye each other, each other up and down. Oh, made the best dad win. Brian and I shake hands, lock eyes. It's about to go down. Oh god. I see, I see, I see. 
Ready, golf. Okay. Boop. No. Yes. A hole full of balls. A hole full of balls. Easy. Easy. Hey, Sandler. How you doing, man? This is a shitty golf course, mate, I have to say. No, it doesn't bounce like I thought it would. Shit. I'm on a timer here to nurse, sorry, I have to cut. No! Sender being here makes me nervous. Come on. Yes. yes. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Rank S. Impressive putting. Oh. So good at golf with your friends, you can do this. That is very true. That was the practice I needed. Golf with your friends. This is incredible. Doing good. You having fun? I'm having fun, definitely. Finding a daddy. How can I not be having fun? Min is terrible at golf with your friends? What? What? I don't think you beat me a single time, Sticks. Amanda pulls me aside while Brian and Daisy start walking to the next mm. hole. Hey, are you having a good time? I'm having a great time. I'm having a fantastic time destroying Brian and the food. You beat me. Maybe. Yeah, some of uh, you guys beat me. It sticks literally, I think Sticks and I have played like a hundred games as so you beat me like once or twice. Hmm. I just ask me for your arm because your eyes twitching. No, no, it's not. I feel my left eye twitch. Amanda raises her eyebrows. Mm. We're out to have fun, remember? It's just a game. EA Sports. It's only a game. You're right. It's only a game. A game with extremely high stakes. A game we're currently winning. Hmm. Dead! Ah. Now please, Amanda. Let, please nail this hand next to the hole for me. We need to keep this streak going. Hmm? If it's really that important to you, sure. Amanda walks over and tees up for a particularly hard windmill hole. Grabbing her club, she swing, she winds up and... Launches the ball into the parking lot. She looks me right in the eye and does an exaggerated shrug. Huh? Oops. I disagree with her actions. But I appreciate her act of youthful defiance. She walks over and pats me on the back. That was for your own good. Love you, kiddo. The shit's intense. It's super intensive. But our daughter is throwing. She's like Marl. In that one game. Where's the hole? Oh, it's on the left. Oh my god, it's on the right side of me. Oh. It's super intense. Bomb. It's easy. What? Uh. Okay, I don't. If I just take that jump, it goes over there. What the hell? Ball. No! That's a fake hole. Isn't it? Lost your ball. You had enough money to buy this game yesterday, but that man convinced you to buy some RTS. Next time I make a Steam Deposit, I'll play this. <laughs> oh. No, that was shit. 
Oh, never mind. It was still S rank. <laughs> it sticks sending the two screenshots of the two games she beat me in. Sticks, I'll have you know, I we have like 50 hours in that game, Sticks. If you won only two games, that's not a good sign. I try to maintain an air of professionalism because there are children present, but confetti cannons are going off in my brain. Someone is placing the wreath, wreath of around in a me with the words "best dad" and "bezeled." No, let's see. In the I can't read that because it's slightly cut off. Embezzled on it. Min says Brilty Warlike. Yeah, my uh, Twitch name used to be Brilliantje. Because uh, my name is Jan, I have a Bril or glasses in English. And of course I'm brilliant, so Brilliantje fit, fit it perfectly. Man, I was butchering there, Mike. I have bested you on the field of battle. Mini golf is no joke, of, or mini golf is beneath me. Well, uncovered Jan history, I know, right? <laughs> Moira's mind is blown, she's like, oh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's okay, Moira, it's okay. Calm down. So which one should we go for, guys? Mini golf is no joke. Okay, okay. Yes, that one. Okay. Mini golf's no joke. Oh, he loves that. The secret to mini golf is that you have to be really, really good at it. Exactly. Exactly. The secret to not dying is not dying. The secret to avoid being homeless is buying a house. Like, life is so easy. Mini golf literally is no joke. Exactly, Sonor. Exactly. Oh, Daisy, did you have a good time? Well, how far I did. We haven't even found a buried treasure yet. I think we need to apply for a permit to dig around here. Mm -hmm. I can take Daisy home so we can get the city paperwork started for digging. You two enjoy your night. Ah. Sounds like a plan, Mike. You're cool with that? Sure, just don't get yourself into too much trouble. Gee. Can do. I'll make sure to get into a perfectly reasonable amount of trouble. Exactly. Exactly, that's how you live life, isn't it? Man and Daisy skip away, yelling about buried treasure. Bless that kid's tiny rebellious heart. Uh. Whoa, I guess we should hit the bar now. Uh. There's actually a tiki bar attached to this place. How about that? Sounds like a plan. I'm gonna be a nerd for the next 12 hours. You're gonna be hard coding, Tito. Thank you. Good luck with your nerdy stuff, Tito. Have a good one, mate. Brian and I walk into the Freaky Tiki. Oh. A kitschy island themed bar. Palm trees adorn the walls, and several fake parrots are strewn about. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Brian and I approach the bamboo bar. Because I'm spending more time with Brian, which is a little more bearable since I won. Alright, I'm just gonna get my victory drink and get out of here. I think I already proved myself my superior dadness for the day. <laughs> Two pineapples of hospitality, please. The bartender whips, uh, whips us up to... Jesus Christ, what's wrong with my reading today, dude? 
The bartender whips us up two rum drinks instead of hollowed out pineapples. He set them on fire. We have to blow them out before we can drink them. Aren't you supposed to just be able to throw back drinks that are on fire? Usually I like to, I don't know, drink my drinks. <laughs> if you don't want yours, I'll take it. And miss out on the taste of victory? Oh, I don't think so. I take a sip of my pineapple of hospitality. Victory tastes fruity. Let's talk about lawn maintenance. I have, a, I'm very particular. No. Electric mowers for me. I hand cut everything with scissors. I also only water the law with bottled sprinkling water. I just ran out, so you're gonna have to import some. Italian is preferred, but I'll settle for Icelandic if that's all you have. It's sweet that you're willing to put all of that work into taking care of your dead grass. What? My grass is perfectly healthy. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. I just know the trick to perk it back up. <laughs> I'll work my magic when I finish trimming your grass with the tiniest pair of scissors I own. Man, even when he's trying to be helpful, I feel personally attacked. I heard Min likes fruity. Dude, sticks. Pineapple, fruity. This man is setting up for something. I'm telling you that. Dead grass. Mm -hmm. When I sip more of my drink, I notice a TV in the corner. Hey! Extreme Makeover Deck Edition is on. I love this show. Always makes me want to own a deck. Ugh, I hate this show. Why? It's so clearly fake. Well, yeah, it's reality TV. Who cares? I care. I'm a general contractor. I work with decks all the time. There's no way they're renovating those decks in a matter of two days. It's impossible. It's a three-week job minimum. Uh, you want them to cover those three weeks extensively in every episode? It can't be that interesting to watch a bunch of dudes slave over deck for that long. No one would watch it. I don't like any of those home improvement shows. I want to watch stuff that's real. Like long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. Oh. Oh, that's terrible news for you, Mike. No. No. Not them too. That's the awful truth. <laughs> Not the ghosts, though. Those are real. Tricks just don't have emergency escape buttons. I've been lied to for so long. We both chuckle and sip on our pineapples. So wait, you're a general contractor? Ah. Sure am. I actually helped plan the cul-de-sac we live in. Wow, nice work. Uh. You... Yeah. Kinda of took after some after the footsteps of my old man. He was a general contractor too. And the best. He practically built half of this town with his bare hands. It's weird how you spend your whole life trying to not become your father. Then you wake up one day and there you are. Oh. And I get to work with my hand and it pays more than enough to take care of my daughters. So it's an absolute dream job. For me at least. Hmm. Well, it's impressive. Building stuff has always been my weak point as a dad, and I've been uh, okay with that. Until now. I must defeat him. I do have the patio furniture that I haven't put together, still sitting in the garage. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I should cool it with the dad competition. Gotta keep it light. Yeah, gotta keep it light. Say that to this man. That so is so offensive. <sighs> Right. I must defeat this general contractor with my IKEA building set in my garage. Stare him down and blinking. Yeah, is that the best core of action sticks? Is that how you flirt? Stare him the fuck down. All right. Stare him down and blinking. Oh, he doesn't like that. I look Brian directly in the eyes, my brown ferret, my brows ferret. <laughs> if by some miracle of nature I has telepathic abilities, I hope he can hear my thoughts loud and clear. You shall not best me, Brian. I will reign supreme. Mm -hmm. 
Brian meets my gaze with equal intensity and moves slightly closer to me. Oh, he smells really good, like a burning campfire, cinnamon. I certainly really hope he doesn't actually have telepathic abilities. See? We can keep things friendly here. This is perfectly pleasant. I could do this all night. Because I feel an innate need to impress Brian and prove I'm better than him, obviously. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck? What's going on, Tinder? Oh my god. That's the only reason, I think. Let's keep it moving. Are we gonna ask about the dog? Complain is complain about kids, compliment his beard. I don't know, our beard is better, I would say. Beard, beard, all right. Beard, it shall be. <laughs> compliment his beard. Whoa! Oh my god, he sent an aubergine emote. All, all good beards can coexist in harmony. Yeah, but I mean, this is giving him a good run for his money, I would say. Your beard is nice. It's very healthy. <laughs> Thanks, I grew it myself. Lol at the aubergines. I know, right? Hey, you're not allowed to dad joke another dad. <laughs> Is this how our daughters feel all the time? I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm dead. No! You're oh. being out dead at heart. I mean, you won't go right into that one. That's Dad Joke 101. Listen, buddy. I took Jed Dad Joke 101 years ago. I'm the 400 level classes. I'm in the 400 level classes. I'm well on my way to a degree in farting humor. <laughs> Whoa, man, I must be so proud. No, you can't tell dad jokes to a dad. <laughs> dad goes brrr. Nah, she's not. Look around the room and take in all this kitschy decor. Looking for something else to comment on. There's a gigantic fish hanging above Brian and I. I gesture to it. Cool fish. It smooth. I'm a smooth talker. I got this point on the vis. Fish. Cool fish. That is ah, creme de la creme of talking. So smooth right now. I know, right? <laughs> you gonna remember that one? Yeah, dude. Do it. That would get you all the ladies or daddies. It's definitely fake. What? Really? Hey. Everything in here is fake. That palm, over, that palm tree over there is just a ficus. Ficus? Ficus? With plastic coconuts glued into it. Coconuts glued into it. What the fuck? Just buy a fake palm tree then. Jesus Christ. Palinus after stream. Yeah, it won't be much longer. It sticks. I look over. He's right. Hey. But well, they almost caught something like that fish once. Mine was bigger though. Of course it was. Oh really? Yep, I went off to a trip to Hawaii maybe a decade ago and we were out on the sea for three days catching fish, drinking beer, you know, guy stuff. I had a hot plate on the boat so we could share the fish right after we caught it. Throw a little bit of salt on and lemon. Uh, Actually sounds amazing. Salt and lemon is pretty much all you need for fish to be fair. Well, it was the last day. Everyone had gone to bed already, but I was out there watching the stars. Had my line out too, then all of a sudden it just starts running. So I jump on the reel before it gets ripped out of the rod rack and start fighting with the damn thing. I'm just out there for maybe an hour. Don't call out to my oh, can't call out to my shipmates. It's just man against nature. Right, and no one saw it, right, Brian? Mm-hmm. Finally I'm starting to tucker the guy out. I get him up to the surface and finally get a sight of it. The biggest Marlin I've ever seen. Hemingway esque. 
I got it onto the boat single-handedly. Bruh, a marlin, a big marlin single-handedly on a boat. You're not gonna do that, Brian. You're full of fucking shit. You're absolutely full of shit, Brian. You know what happened next? What happens next, Brian? The damn thing smacks me in the face with his tail. Knocks me out. I wake up the next morning on the deck. Fish gone. Never felt dumber. He just drank too much. That's what happened. So I've got away. I think there's another version of me that would have spent the rest of my life trying to catch that fish, Captain Ahab style. I'm sure this would be supportive. Ah. Don't like this daddy? He's a bit boastful, isn't he? I agree, Moira. I don't like him either. So from Matt, even though in my gut everything tells me to hate Matt with a single T, who is also a barista. Everything points to us. We had to had to hate him, but he seems pretty okay. And then we have Crack, who's okay because he has like so many kids. He's too busy to be a like a dickwad. This daddy is a fake daddy. Yeah, totally. He's pretending to be a ghoul daddy. Oh man, fishing's a life. Haven't gone enough lately. You go fishing? Fishing for them nudes? Yeah, actually, I have a confession to make. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I having this inexplicable urge to be vulnerable with him? I can't tell him that I'm terrible at fishing. I lean in close. I'm amazing at fishing, I'm the best at fishing, or no one can outfish me. Which one will it be? No one can outfish me. I agree. I think that's the best one. I'm simply the best out there. Okay, since you're such a pro, I'm taking you fishing. Do you want to go fishing? Wait, don't answer that. Yes, you do. We're going fishing. Oh, no. This is... Uh, Fishing allegations coming up. Statutory fishing. Oh god. Uh, I don't know. Oh come on, it'll be a blast. I know the perfect little fishing spot. I'll bring out some beers, we can just sit back, relax, and reel in some trout. I'll bring the kids with us. Come on, you know you want to. Yes, because it could also mean he's the best at being a fish. <laughs> yes, I think that's it. that is. I think Moira has figured it out. I think that is the twist this game is gonna take. This man is a fish in disguise. <laughs> a sigh. The cornet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brian gives me an exuberant high five. Ah. Yes, maybe we'll see who can catch the most fish. So I can get you mowing my lawn. A murdad. Murnos. Oh yeah, that's Janos, isn't it? Murnos is hot. <laughs> the murdad. You can try to beat me, but they don't call me Mike. Good at fishing, or good at catching fish. Oxlong, for nothing. I'm spinning a web of lies that I fear one day will consume me. Sounds like I'll be a scrub. Brandon and I finish our drinks and head outside. Till next time. This is a great opportunity for friendship. I'm real excited. Oh, kiss my bass, Brian. Okay, one for the tunity, one for the bass, the second one for the bass. They're all terrible dad jokes, anyways. Kiss my bass, Brian. Gladly. I think I'm like fucking up with Brian a lot because we get a lot of them. Black stuff behind him. It doesn't seem positive. I'm not cancelled for that. No. Shut up. Brian extends his hands and gives me a friendly but firm handshake. I see that competitive fire in his eyes. 
This is going to be a comma hole thing, isn't it? Eh? Once Brian takes over babysitting duties, Amanda walks home with me. She immediately plops down on the couch and flips on the TV. So, how was your hang with Brian? He wasn't too spicy about us crushing the feet, was he? No, it's pre pretty gracious about it. Like, frustratingly gracious. Yeah, how oh, dare the guy have some decency? Come on, Dad. He seems like a neat dude. I think so? I don't know. The guy loves a good competition. But then again, apparently, so do I. What did you and Daisy end up doing? Huh. Oh, we hunted for treasure for a bit. But Daisy was really adamant about not digging without a permit, so we just watched some documentary about, about theoretical physics. I put it to bed, and then sat around eating Brian's food. Huh. Don't tell him I said that. That's standard babysitting protocol, I believe. I really like hanging out with Daisy, she's super mature for her age. Yes, Brian says she has a hard time relating to other kids. She kind of reminds me of you at her age. Although she doesn't bite people as much as you did. I can't believe I'm finally the cool other kid. Feels good. Gonna hang out- oh. You gonna hang out with Brian again? That's the thing. He wants to go fishing with me. Huh? Oh. I told him I was an amazing fisherman. Hmm. Mm, you hate fishing. I know. I'm kind of panicking. Ah. I'm sure it will be fine. All you have to do is wake up in the crack of dawn and sit silently in a boat or a lake for hours on end, with no promises of tangible reward. Your only companion being the fear and doubt you are harbor deep within your heart. Are you harbor deep within your heart? Sounds like fun. <laughs> Fishing's fun. You remind yourself as a work darkens room. World darkens around you, and you wonder if it's really just staring back at yourself in the next reflection. Or simply just the abyss. Sounds like Paladins, dude. It sounds less painful than Paladins still, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I laugh at it, Amanda. You're coming with us. Hmm? It's my constitutional right to outright refuse this order. This is coming too. Well, um... I bet he could convince Brian to bring his dog. Fine. Sold. I'm in. <laughs> gaze into the abyss. Yes, literally gaze into the abyss. People who don't play Paladins are not gonna get that and gonna think you're calling for gaze into an abyss somewhere. Fine. Sold. I'm in. Alright. I'm bushed. Gonna call it a night. Don't stay up to later, Ed. Got it, Pops. That's why you wrote it correctly. I know, Six. See, you're clever. You think about this kind of stuff. Date complete. <laughs> oh, I see you. Rank B, what? We didn't embarrass that child. He barely grilled. We had a decent rivalry and competition. We were a meh. Pirate, but we tikied really hard, dude. We tikied so hard. We were the hardest tikier of all tikis. You've got dads. You've got dads. Oh, it's crack again. Uh, buddy, got a favor to ask. Robert invited me over for dinner, but I'm afraid he's gonna fucking murder me because he's definitely addicted to like cocaine or something. I don't know it's kind of faux pas to invite another bro, but I've known the guy for years and I still can't get a good read of him. And I know it's going to be super awkward if I come by myself. Richard, please come with me. I think those are... Is that an egg inside of them or is that just like a really weird emoji? And then like, my... Is that a hand with an egg inside of it? Or is it like one of those de detective glasses? I think it's a frying pan with an egg, isn't it? Egg. Pen. Egg. Pen. Egg. Now. Sticks hungry. Pen. 
Heck. And then the sweating emoji that no one uses as a sweating emoji. And then a... Pan. Egg. She's smart. No, I'm smart. I love food, dude. Especially love food that's free. And I don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking. But sure. Yeah, dude. I'm down. Thank you. Bless. I really hope that's a sweat of relief. There's a difference. Yeah, six is not 500 IQ. Oh man, I don't know how I feel about social time with Robert. See? Even my character in-game doesn't think Robert is kosher. Still, I guess free food is free food. Yeah, dude, I'm done. Thank you. Craig and I decide to meet it before heading over to Robert's place. Oh. Um... Crack, I'm gonna save the game here and I'll s we'll have our date next time. That's a good start to the next episode. To the next stream. So, thank you all for coming. That's a good thing. Where are the girls? The girls can stay at home. Robert uh, seems to be a bit of a, like, criminal. And I don't want him trafficking, trafficking my girl away. You know what I'm saying? Just casual dad stuff, right? Fair play, uh-huh. So I'll be streaming at least this next week on Saturday again. 8th Central European time. And I don't know, I'll probably try to stream something more like during the week this week, because I have vacation. Thank you all for coming. I had a lovely time trying to find my next dad. And I'll see you all next time. Oi, sticks, don't diss my time. Bye.